Sagittaria latifolia, broadleaf arrowhead, also referred to as the common arrowhead. And this is a perennial aquatic plant in the water plantain family. Other common names for this plant are the duck potato or waputo. And this is in reference to the enlarged, rounded, starchy golf ball sized tubers that form at the end of the rhizomes underground. And when, when dislodged from the mud, they actually float to the surface. But unfortunately, this isn't quite the season for harvesting them, but I wanted to show you this plant right now. And uh, it's just so incredible. So although this plant occurs naturally in many areas, it's also a sought after aquatic plant that's cultivated by those who have ponds or waterways on their property. I'm gonna just stay here for a moment to show you the flowers, which are a fair size. That's about an inch in diameter or about one to two centimeters. Three petals, white. The arrowhead. As you can tell, forms very large colonies in slow moving or stagnant water. And they often cover large amounts of ground, as you can see here. And they've been frequently mentioned in ethnographic and archaeological literature. So I'm going to go over here. And I would suspect perhaps a beaver has trodden down this area to make it his or her entrance point. Some of these, if I can get close enough, are have formed seed heads, which actually the ones I've taken out already. There we go. Now the leaves uh, as you can see, sorry, <laughs> they are shaped like an arrowhead. They're basal stalks, long, angled, and sheathed at the base. The leaf blades are above water, but actually there can be some submerged as well, which, let's see if I can, down there. You'll find this in marshes, swamps, streams, ponds, and lake borders. This is actually a stream. It may not look like a stream, but it is. <laughs> Absolutely incredible how many are here, hundreds. Now, before foraging for this, you've really got to be careful. It's extremely important to know the dangers and be 100% certain of the plant's identity. Arrowhead may have been a very important food source historically, but not so much today because of pollution. This plant is very well known to absorb metals and other pollutants. So you really need to know the source of water in which these grow before you can even attempt to harvest them. And the water you're looking at here, there is no way I would eat anything from this water. Now, in the autumn, the bulbs will be formed, but right now, this is what they look like underwater long white rhizomes and some small roots. If you're fortunate enough to find these in a clean source of water, don't eat the bulbs or the, the root of these raw, whatever you do. They have to be roasted or boiled and boiled well, or roasted well. These were really important food sources of indigenous peoples, and in some areas, are they're still valued as a great food source. Though the skin is edible, 
arrowhead tubers are more palatable when peeled. And if you really are that fortunate to be able to harvest some of these, you're going to score. You're going to get lots of potassium, magnesium, protein, vitamin B6, iron, eh, a little bit of vitamin C and a little bit of calcium. Not a whole heck of a lot though. So the arrowhead. This is, there we go. Thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Thank you.